Hello YouTube, welcome back to a brand new video. It's your girl Chloe here. For those who have never seen me before, my name is Chloe Jenkins. Hi, welcome. If you are not subscribed already, can you please go down there and make sure you subscribe, like the video, turn post notifications on so every time I make a brand new video, you'll be notified of that upload. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about my seven year anniversary in hormones body changes and the side effects of the hormones, what it's done to me personally as an individual. So if you're ready for that, please make sure, that once again, you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, because this is going to be a banger. See you in a minute. So these are the things that it's done to my body. So it's gave me smooth skin. So when I rub my hand across my arms, it's like baby smooth. And even with less of hairs now, it's just, it feels so good to touch. I don't know why, but it just feels so smooth, silky smooth, like, like a baby's bum. Um, it's also made me put on weight too, which is obviously a side effect of taking estrogen. It probably won't happen to everybody, but unfortunately it's happened to me. Um, and I'm trying to sort that out by going to the gym every day and just keeping myself health, uh, uh, healthy and fit. It's also given me soft and longer hair, which I'm really pleased about. Um, I have been growing my hair out since I was like seven, eight years old, maybe even before that. And my parents never let me cut it at all. I just kept it and I've been growing out for like 20 years now. Well, maybe 20, 20 plus years. Um, also along with HIT side effects comes breast pain um, and tenderness. Now, for me, personally, when I started hormones in 2016, I kind of like, but even before that, I kind of like um, went on them illegally um, and I was getting them from somebody else because I was like so desperate to start on hormones. Anyway, I think I did this like six months prior before getting on the NHS pathway. And obviously that kind of doesn't count towards, um, you know, when I actually officially started them. Um, because I was so like excited to get on them. I just wanted to do it, you know, the, the way where you're not supposed to do it. Um, but ever since then, I think it took me like 24 months to develop breasts. Um, yeah, I was kind of a late starter, but when it did grow in, I got like a little bud on my breast and it just kept on blowing up. Like it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I obviously took pictures of that every single week and I, I noticed a really big change. After about maybe two and a half, three years, they stopped growing. I don't know why, but there's actually a limit to how far it can take you. And apparently for me anyway... When I got to three years in hormones, my breast development just stopped growing. Um, and they're just, they've been like that ever since. So anyway, it comes uh, along with that comes mood changes and low mood um, and depression as well. Tired or uh, being dizzy, stomach and pelvic pain. Now I actually want to talk about this, stomach and pelvic pain. Not every transgender woman gets stomach and pelvic pain. Now, Here's the thing. Let me put this paper down. There's a lot of people on the internet today um, spreading false and misinformation with trans women and having periods. Now, the reason why I call my, or mine, periods is the fact that because a period is not only just related to a uterine lining shedding its uterus thing, um, and it's not all about bleeding, you know, when, when, when I say period, period to me basically means, you know, back pain, leg pain, leg cramps, stomach cramps, backache, headaches, nausea, that sort of thing. But, you know, in, to, in society today, all they see period as is just bleeding. But period has many, many different reasons and many, many different symptoms of a period. Yes, trans women do get period symptoms. We just don't bleed. What I like to call this is ghost cramping. Um, so what I'm trying to say is that ghost cramping is basically like 
the feeling of what a biological woman gets. But for us, the pain, we, we still get the, the same pain that biological women do in that same area. But it's, it, well, it, it's, yeah, it's still the same pain. But I know it's just weird. It's, it's called a ghost cramp. And that's what I like to call it anyway. And what happens is that when that pain comes on, my body thinks that it's got a uterus there when it hasn't. So it still gives me the pain, even though I haven't got a uterus to shed. But anyway, that's, pro that's for a whole different video. So carrying on then, uh, where are we? So it also, so the side effects also improve psychological and social well-being. It eases psychological and emotional distress related to gender. It improves satisfaction with sex, but this can also be a negative and sex life may hinder. It can improve your quality of life as well. And speaking about improving my life with HRT, my life has got so much better. And I, I don't know where I would be without hormones today. Like if I never got on them when I did, I'd be waiting a long, long time on the NHS just to get prescribed hormones. I'm glad I did it when I did. But the only thing I'm waiting for for a long time is surgery. I'm hoping to get that within the next two years, according to what my gender clinic said anyway. So we're going to go on. To, we're going to move on to body changes now. So the body changes from the, the hormones can include the penis becoming smaller as well as the orchinectomy, which are the testes. It will give you a much more feminine appearance, more like an hourglass shape and fat redistribution around the hips, bum, stomach, underarms, which is bingo wings. Uh, cheekbones, eyes and face will have a much more feminine appearance as the fat under the skin increases. Uh, it also shifts, has, it has uh, fewer, you'll, you'll, you'll be having fewer erections and decrease in um, ejaculation, less interest in sex, less oily skin and uh, less muscle mass, more body fat, less facial and body hair growth. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you my body all the way around 360 and I'll let you decide for yourself um, from how I looked previously, like what's three, four, five years ago to how I look now. So I'm going to show you my hourglass that it's given me. So as you can see, it's my, you know, hips have curved so, so much. And yes, I've lost a lot of weight too, because um, I'm going through a lot of stress at the moment. But as we turn around, you can see it's um, changed my hips, the sides, my stomach. So, yeah. Uh, but... Aside from all that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really happy for what it's done. Um, I could not be more happier. The next step in my transition now is surgery, which is what I'm really looking forward to. My gender clinic have said that um, they should be hoping that I would get a my first medical opinion by October, November time this year. And then they've said after that, hopefully in July, June, July time next year, I should have my second sign off, but I've got to obviously pass, uh, pass the first one first. And then once I've passed one in uh, the both of them, then I've got to, um, I think that they're going to refer me to my, sur my chosen surgeon, which is Dr. Miss Tina Rashid in Parkside Hospital London. And then once they've done that, we can just go from there. But um, anyway, I hope you all enjoyed. And I shall catch you all soon. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and I shall catch you later. Mwah.